Shelach. In the Torah portion of Shelach, we learn about the twelve spies that were sent into the land of Canaan. We learn about the ten spies who gave a negative report about the land and struck fear into the hearts of Israel. We learn about how God punished the people of Israel for refusing to trust in Him and cross into the land of Israel. We also learn about Yehoshua, one of the two spies who brought back a favorable report and was destined to lead the people into the land of Canaan 40 years later. All this from the people of Israel choosing not to trust in God and in turn being cursed to wander for 40 years, to Yehoshua, the one who would ultimately lead Israel into the promised land. All this points towards the Messiah. It says in Numbers 13 verse 2, Send out for yourself a men, so that they may spy out the land of Canaan, which I am going to give to the sons of Israel. You shall send a man from each of their father's tribes, every one a leader among them. The name of this Torah portion, Shelach, means send out. The Hebrew word Sheliach has the same root of Shelach and means a sent one. The word apostle comes from the Greek word apostolos. This word means exactly the same thing that shaliach means. The apostles of Yeshua were called apostles because they were sent out. In this same vein, the spies that Moshe sent to explore the land can be referred to as twelve apostles sent out to Canaan. It says in Matthew 10 verses 1 through 2, Yeshua summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. In the first verse, Yeshua's followers are disciples, but in the second verse, they are apostles. As soon as Yeshua sends them out, his disciples become his apostles. This relation can be cemented further by looking at the text of these two passages. Right after Moshe sends out the twelve spies, the Torah lists the men's names. Matthew 10 does this exact same thing, right after the disciples are referred to as apostles. Immediately after the Torah recounts the names of the twelve apostles spies, it relates a speech that Moshe gave to them before they left. This speech consists of instructions for their mission things they are supposed to notice, and goals they are supposed to accomplish. Matthew 10 does the same thing. Immediately after recounting the names of the twelve apostles, it talks about Yeshua giving a speech to them before sending them out. In Numbers 13, Moshe sent out the twelve spies to spy out the cities and villages of the land of Canaan. In Matthew 10, Yeshua sent the apostles to the lost sheep of Israel, among the cities and villages of the land of Israel, telling them not to go in the way of the Gentiles. They were to stay within the land of Canaan with the express intent of helping the people of Israel. When Yeshua sent out His disciples, He sent them out in pairs. It does not say in the Torah that the spies went in pairs, but it implies it. Yehoshua and Kalev are a pair. There are two men who carry a cluster of grapes on a pole. And when Yehoshua sends spies to Jericho some forty years later, he sends them as a pair. The connection between the sending out of the twelve spies and the sending out of the twelve disciples hints towards the deeper meaning of Yeshua's mission. The future of the people hung in the balance in both missions. When the spies returned and gave their evil report, it is said that the current day of the month was the ninth of the fifth month. Tisha Be'av a Jewish fast day upon which multiple calamities throughout history have occurred. When the people rebelled and refused to go into the land that God had given them, God doomed the entire generation, as it says in Numbers 14, verse 34. According to the number of days which you spied out the land, forty days for every day, you shall bear your guilt a year, even forty years, and you will know my opposition. Yeshua believed that his generation was also doomed in a similar fashion. He says in Luke 11:29, "This generation is a wicked generation." He says in Luke 11:50, 
the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world will be charged against his generation. He says in Luke 17 verse 25 that he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. He told his disciples that this generation would see the judgment that would come upon Yerushalayim. In Acts 2 verse 40, when the apostles were sharing their message, they said, Be saved from this perverse generation. Forty years later, one biblical generation later, on Tisha B'Av, the Romans burned the holy temple, destroyed the city of Yerushalayim, and took its population into captivity. This was the great judgment that Yeshua had warned about. This great judgment began the exile of the Jewish people from the land of Israel. That still exists to this day. Yeshua knew this would happen if the people of Israel didn't accept his invitation to enter the kingdom. This is why he sent out his twelve disciples with the message in Matthew 10 verse 7, Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It says in Numbers 13 verses 16, These are the names of the men whom Moshe sent to spy out the land. But Moshe called Hoshea, son of Nun, Yehoshua. Moshe renamed Hoshea by adding the letter Yod to the front of his name. Hoshea means salvation, while Yehoshua means the Lord saves. The Talmud connects this name change with another famous name change. In Genesis 17 verse 15, God changed Sarai's name to Sarah, removing the letter Yod from Sarai and replacing it with a He to spell Sarah. The Talmud explains that God took this Yod and added it to Yehoshua's name. The letter Yod, which I took from Sarai's name, cried out continuously through the years until Yehoshua came and I added it to his name, as it is written in Numbers 13.16, Moshe called Hoshea the son of Nun, Yehoshua. This story implies that Yehoshua carried a direct link to the patriarchs and what they hoped to achieve. In this way, Yehoshua foreshadows the Messiah by leading the people into the promised land. Yeshua will lead Israel into the kingdom, the messianic age, the resurrection of the dead, and the world to come, as it says in Hebrews 4 verses 8 through 9, For if Yehoshua had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another day after that. So there remains a Shabbat rest for the people of God. In fact, Yeshua and Yehoshua are the same name. When the name Yehoshua appears in Aramaic, the Aramaic pronunciation truncates it into Yeshua. Yeshua is simply a shortened version of Yehoshua. One could even say that Yeshua's Hebrew name is Yehoshua. Zechariah 6 verse 12 reveals that the Messiah's name is Yehoshua. It happened when the prophet Zechariah made an ornate crown of gold, placed it on the head of the priest, Yehoshua, son of Yehotzadak, and declared, Behold, a man whose name is Branch, for he will branch out from where he is, and he will build the temple of the Lord. According to this, the high priest, Yehoshua, and the Messiah have the same name. In the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, the same high priest appears with the Aramaic form of his name, Yeshua, the son of Yotzadak. In this Torah portion, we learn about the twelve spies that scouted out the land of Canaan. We learn about how their grave mistake of bringing back a bad report and the success of doom that God brings upon them points towards a future time of judgment that is still going on today. We learn how Yehoshua, son of Nun, was a foreshadow of Yeshua.